What's up, everybody? Isaac here, Civil Engineering Academy. Excited to be with you on another podcast episode. Today, I bring a guest that was a student of our course, the Ultimate Civil P Review course. We're excited to bring him on to talk about his exam experience, which is actually pretty unique. He was a mechanical engineer that ended up taking the Civil Engineering PE exam and eventually passing this thing using our course material to help him do that. Uh, it's a fascinating story. He's originally from Columbia, and he also talks about him getting a master's degree here in Texas in the United States and just his overall experience and what he's doing now as a tower engineer helping to build our network out for 5G and all of that good stuff. So Esteban Valderrama is our my guest today. I'm excited to share this experience with you. And if you are going through the same questions, maybe you're a mechanical engineer wanting to take the civil uh, PE exam, this is going to be right up your alley. Or if you're taking the structural engineering depth exam, that's what he did. This is also going to be information you want to pay attention to as well. So without further ado, let's get to my interview with Esteban, you're really going to enjoy this, and we will see you in a minute. Hey, before we start diving into this awesome podcast episode with lots of nuggets of awesome wisdom uh, that we're going to help you with, I want to take a moment to highlight our awesome partner, Civil Engineer Gear. As a civil engineer myself, this is hands down the go-to destination for sleek and professional looking day-to-day -day gear with a civil engineering flair. You can bet that it's mine for sure. So whether you're on the job site, the job office, you're burning the midnight oil, studying for your exams, or you're just chilling at home on the weekends, which many of us do, there is is civil engineering inspired products there that combine functionality and professionalism to be your companion, your best companion during those days you want to check out. I definitely love the comfortable t-shirts and sweatshirts. I'm wearing one right now. I don't start my day without a awesome drink. One of my favorite drinks and they're awesome canteens. We also have awesome mugs and don't even get me started on the spacious bags that they have there. They're big enough for all of my personal protective equipment, my PPE, shove it all in there, carry it with me and it's not so big that you can't carry it around it's just it's actually a perfect fit you can use it for your gym clothes you can wear it, use it for your camping gear yoga whatever it is you name it throw it in the back now the best part of all this is that shipping is free on all orders so if you are interested in getting some sweet civil engineering gear check it out at civilengineeredgear.com and make sure to treat yourself with some awesome gear and accessories tailored specifically to your professional and personal life as a civil engineer but check it out you won't be disappointed. All right, we welcome to me on to the Civil Engineering Academy podcast. I appreciate you joining me today. Yes, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I'll have to. Uh, we talked about this earlier, but I have to apologize for my internet connection. It might be a little spotty. We're in the middle of a move, but we'll. We'll piece this together as best we can, but um, why don't you please tell us a little bit about yourself, um, how you came here. I know you got a degree in mechanical, but you're civil, and now you're working, I believe, in a career in civil engineering. So could you give us a little bit of background about yourself? Yes. Well, my name is Esteban Baderrama, and I graduated with a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. When I was doing my mechanical engineering, I developed this love for structures. And I was always passionate with learning how things work or why things move. I remember things like what an airplane is able to fly it or a boat can be floating, that type of questions. And that took me to the mechanical engineer field. When then I was doing the mechanical. I learned about different type of types of structures. And I always wonder why mechanicals don't do the big structure. Why we don't do the bridges. Why we don't do the buildings, the towers. So that took me to the rest of my career, which was pursuing a master's degree in civil engineering with a concentration in the structural and geotechnical. So that's how I was able to couple those two. Uh, mechanical engineers, we are very familiar with the structures in the small size. It was just taking that knowledge and expand it to the, to the bigger structure. That's fascinating. I think that's awesome. So what do you do for your career right now? I worked in the telecommunications industry. Yeah. 
So we work for different uh, carriers, cell phone carriers. And what we do is we analyze the tower structure and the mounts. That's how we call the structure that hold the antennas. I'm talking about 5G antennas. I work in a company that we analyze the structural part of the towers to make sure the loading that is being put there nowadays with the 5G revolution, if we can call it, um, we we make sure that it's safe to keep them out there. The structure. That's awesome. Are there, are there certain softwares that you use to help analyze those things? Yes, we in the company I work at is called Congruix, and the company we use Risa 3D. But there can be different finite element software that it can be used. There is a Stat Pro, uh, SAP 2000. There are different softwares we use, Risa, and we also develop a lot of uh, in house software. I have, I learned the skills of programming as well, which is very helpful for any engineer hmm. so that I'm able to sit down and develop code or, not, or a whole software package to to be able to analyze the specifics when we want when we want to analyze connections to between the mount and the tower when we want to check uh the foundation if it's a deep or a shallow foundation we develop our own uh, spreadsheets in excel that we can use over and over again So yeah, it's a, that's those are the things that's amazing. What we use. Um, that's great. Um, it sounds like um, I, I'm curious how you found yourself into that career as a mechanical engineer. Did you start in that field, or did you were you working somewhere else and you worked your way into that? Yeah, I have a long story of looking for opportunities, but when I moved to the United States, I worked in the aerospace industry as a mechanical engineer. I did the structures, I analyzed the structures in the aerospace industry, basically developing computer codes to to check how many flights an airplane can do before failure. I spent two years, almost three, doing that. That was with the University of Texas at San Antonio. And after that, I decided to pursue my master's degree and surprise, I did not find a job. After having a master's degree, after having my mm-hmm. GT, which I passed in 2015 in mechanical, I wasn't able to find a job. So during that time, I needed to survive. By the parking, Uber driving, Lyft, uh, I decided to become a teacher and I have my teaching experience and my teacher certificate. I taught um, elementary and middle school math. And one day I was looking in LinkedIn and there was this company hiring for a structural engineer entry level. I applied and I was always thinking if they give me an opportunity to take a test in the during the interview, they will hire me. And exactly that happened. When I went to the interview, the interview went good. But when I was able to show my skills, they gave me a test, structural test, where I was able to do the numbers, do the process, do the calculations. Next day, they called me that they make an offer and they wanted me, they wanted me to join the company. At that point, that was on 2019, when I was able to work in the tower industry as a, as a civil structure. Wow, that's fascinating. So fast forward, you've earned your PE license doing a structural depth exam. How has earning your professional engineering license impacted your career? It's been very helpful in the sense of meetings, uh, different, uh, um, when the companies joined, we are different vendors, different companies that work together in the telecommunications industry. And when there is a decision, a new process, a new way of calculating things to decide, having those two letters at the end of your name, it will give you the, you have the authority and the opportunity 
to talk and to express what you are thinking and how you want it to do things. Before, yes, I could say things in those meetings, but it was more of a, okay, now let's hear what the PEs need to say. Now I'm part of that group of the PE engineer that take the decisions on how we can do things. So it's an open door. It was an open door for, for me as a professional, but also in the company and in my relationship with the other companies and with the other engineering firms, which is, has been very helpful for me and for the company that I work at. That makes sense. I'm curious because there's probably other people that are mechanical engineers curious about switching to take the PE in a civil field or civil discipline. Um, what advice would you give to a mechanical engineer that wants to, I guess, take a structural depth exam? I would say that you really love the structural part like I did or like I do. Focus on the structural. I'm saying that because I had a lot of friends and peers in the company that sometimes would try to look for the First, I'm a third time taker. I repeated the test that in the third time I passed. So you always receive the comments, hey, change the field, do it in geotech, do it in construction, it's easier. And yes, it is, but, or probably it is, but I like the structural part. And for me as a mechanical, taking it in any other of the five uh, field uh, options that we have as a civil, is more, it's gonna be more difficult because I didn't know anything about transportation. I knew things about water resources because the mechanical application is a little bit different, but I didn't know everything. Taking it in geotech, uh, even though my master's degree is in geotech, it was not very on that focus, like very depth. So the only option I had was to do it in, in a structural. So my, the advice is, if you really like it, you need to take the time to study. Like I did, I joined Civil Engineering Academy for the for the class, and and I was able to grasp the concept that I didn't know as a mechanical. For example, transportation, uh, wood, uh, timber design, or concrete design, because I didn't have those classes at school, but you have to make the time to sit down. The classes are very well structured. The examples are very tailored to what is really being asked on the test. And that was very helpful for me. Uh, and also the structure of the, of the class is That's the awesome. structure of the test, which is very helpful for me because I, I tend to be a very type A person, step one, two, three, going down in the list of things. That's great. Was that your favorite part about the class is how it was structured or was there some other items that you thought were, were standouts? To be honest, yes. I did, I, I had two different courses, two different classes. Different company that I tried, it, it was not how I preferred to study because not all the material was there available. The responses were not very fast. The Civil Engineering Academy has an advantage and it's, the, and it's the Facebook group. A lot of people try to help you. A lot of people answer your questions. And, and even me, in, once I knew a person was asking questions, I have that desire of going and helping others as well, if it was something that I knew. So, comparing from the two classes, yes. Favorite part, obviously, was how structured the class, the class was, but also how responsive you guys are when we have questions. Yeah, I think a lot of people love the support that they get when they join the course. Uh, they're not going at it alone, that they have people they can ask questions and we get we try to get on those as quickly as possible with the team. Um, so we're, we're happy that you got a good experience there. Um, that's awesome. And we love the practice exams, getting those under your your belt are always key, and we try to offer a simulator that mimics the real exam, too, to help get you prepared for that. But um, hopefully all those things were helpful as well. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll say about the simulator, when I first joined the class, the simulator was on development, 
he were only sending the messages that he was going to be available. The later was available for me after I took my first test. So I had, uh, I was able to compare how the real test was to the simulator they ah. offer. And to me, it was like I was taking exactly the same test. It looked exactly the same. The references looked exactly the same. It was, it was very helpful. That's great. That's good to hear. It, uh, sometimes it's hard to get feedback on those things, so it's good to hear you had a good experience and that we're trying to match what's out there uh, to give people uh, a realistic testing environment before they go take the real deal. Um, I'm curious, what advice would others that maybe find themselves repeating the exam over and over again? Um, what kind of mindset should they have? How can they keep moving forward and not get discouraged? Because the pass rates are pretty bad if you look at the statistics on the NCES website. So I'm curious your thoughts. Well, in my case, when I have something in mind and I decided that I wanted to be a professional engineer in the civil side, I, when I have that in mind, I, I know I will accomplish. So yes, I failed the first time and it was hard take a month on may I took like a month break and then start over trying to study and, and it was difficult yes because it's two things one is I am learning civil engineering the other one is I have the pressure that I fell once and I cannot fail the second time even though I knew that I failed the second time but that didn't didn't stop me and I hope that doesn't stop anybody else you guys need to continue trying uh, for those like me, I have two kids, a five-year-old and a two-year-old. So it's also the support from my family, my wife, uh, getting nights after work. She was helping with the kids and obviously bedtime, shower time, and all of that. We're trying to do that fast so that I was able to spend some time at night, every night studying without being very late for next day to go to work. So I think the family support is very helpful, but more than that, it's the commitment uh, for you as a professional and knowing that this is for you and your career and then for your family, which are supporting you already. So I think it's, it's very great that, that, yeah, if you fail once, twice, three times, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the, at the end of the day, it will say professional engineer. So focus. Take a break if needed and go back from the beginning to, to your studies. In my case, like I said, I didn't know a lot about geotechnical, a lot about transportation. So that's how I divided my, my study, my learning. I spent my time focusing in concrete, in steel, for that part. And in the morning session, I made sure I covered all the, what I, what I was calling the easy classes, construction, site development, even the structural mechanics part, try to cover all those, make sure those bases from engineering are, you're doing those questions correct so that the afternoon is a little bit easier. That's amazing. I, I mean, I'm blown away that um, you could do that. And I think that that's just fantastic. Um, in your comments, you talked about working out a schedule with your family. And I'm curious how you found a balance uh, as you started this journey to prepare for this exam of chatting with your family about this, your employer, um, and all the other things you had going on, kids especially, people want to know how you study with kids too. So curious your thoughts on that. Yes. Uh, well, let's just start with my employer. I We work, the office is on a building that I had to ask permission for coming in er early or staying late. So it was one of the two. If I couldn't study at night, I was going early to the office before I started my, my eight hour shift. So I was going to the office probably, I would say 6.15, 6.30, study until like eight, watching videos, trying to do some problems. And then coming back home around five, helping my wife with dinner time, helping kids with playing with my kids and spending some time with them, an hour. By 8 o'clock, I was 
5 p.m. I was, all right, kids, it's time to go to bed, put them to bed. My wife then started to do her stuff, and and that was the time that I was sitting down on my desk and, and trying to study at least two to three hours. I was probably going to bed around, I would say, 11, 11.30, because I really take a long time to learn things. That's my learning style in in knowing that I needed to learn civil engineering uh, classes or part of part of the classes for the test, it was something completely new for me. So I needed to spend more time on that. And how many how many hours would you recommend studying during a week? I was for and sure. Maybe how many months before an exam would you recommend? I would say I study at least. For a person like me, I'll say three months is going to be fine. And on those three months, I was for sure studying every Monday to, so three days, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. I was not spending study time on Fridays, nor Mondays. And also on the weekends, I was spending the whole morning, probably from 8 to 12, doing problems, just problems. Whatever video I saw during the week, Plus whatever problem problem I did in the week, I was repeating those and try to get more and more on a Saturday. And then Sunday, I was spending time with the family, at least for the first, uh, I would say two, two months and a half. Then when I was getting closer to the test, I increased my study hours just to read again and to, because for me, the theory part was very difficult. Um, the problems, yeah, I, I knew now how to do them because I did a lot of problems, a lot of practice tests, and repeating the tests over and over again from the ones that you offer in the website, the PDFs. Um, but then I increased the, the study time. So there were some weekends. It takes some sacrifices. I missed some family birthdays. I missed some family reunions where my kids were there, where my 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 wife, my in-laws, they all were together and they're always ha were asking, hey, where is Esteban? Where is Esteban? Well, Esteban is standing for a test. But now I can see the fruit of it. That's great. It's a big sacrifice to take this exam. And that's why I'm so impressed with what you've done um, and with all you have going on. Uh, uh, another question I have related maybe to the structural depth exam is um, a lot of people are concerned with how many codes and standards are on that exam. How did you, as a mechanical, wrap your head around all those codes and standards? How did you get them, um, and and how did you, uh, I guess, become more familiar with them? I was very fortunate to have friends that have the codes that they can they share with me, and I was able to study from them. Now, it was a little easier because those friends, they took the test when it was in paper and pencil, so they have the physical code, and they already have tabs on it, and it was easy to go and find what I needed. During the real test, it's a little more difficult because to me, because you are on a PDF trying to press Control F to really search for what you specifically need. Now, if you think about it, the still code is only table with numbers, so there is nothing that you can really go and and search. So once I saw that. I decided to take the time to, all right, this week I'm going to study the steel code and I'm going to learn that part one, part two is this, part three is this, in this specification and the commentary part one with part one are matching. They are the same thing. Part uh, Chapter two with chapter, I'm sorry, chapter A and chapter A are the same, chapter B and chapter B are the same from the specification and the commentary. And in that way, I was able to learn where to go when I was looking at a PDF. On the ACI, on the concrete code, same thing. I was able to basically almost that learn the table of contents. So I know what to what to search for. And the masonry code, uh, if I if I am honest, masonry and wood were the areas that I studied less. And I was fortunate to only have theory questions on those. So those were easy to find in the theory. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a little challenging to wrap your head around the, those codes, but 
but it's not impossible, especially if you're constantly doing problems, problems. And also at work, it's, we use code. I mean, we work as structural, structural engineers, so we get to use the code state. Were there any surprises on the exam that you weren't expecting? Yeah, they were. They, uh, there were questions about post uh, tension that I didn't, that I didn't prepare for. You know the basics, you know how to check the internal force, the separate the beam, for example, between the steel that goes inside and the concrete and, and you know the basics, but then when he's asking you, when they, when they ask you the question, they trick you and, and you just try to do, in my case, I try to do what I knew and select an answer and who knows if I got it right or wrong. Or who knows if it is one of those that is a testing question, right? Uh, more surprises I had um, in the project uh, management when you have the the activities, the arrows, diagrams mm -hmm. that you have, like the sequencing. Uh, they usually ask you for the total float or for the, yeah, num questions like that, very basic. But the question I was having was a little tricky. It was, it was like depending, like it had multiple parts and it was like depending one from the other. So overall, there were not a lot of surprises, but the surprises that I had, I was always thinking like, I'm making sure I'm doing the the rest of the dev, yeah, the morning section correctly so that I don't have to worry about that question. There were questions in the afternoon that were, um, for wood, I had a question, like you have to drag and drop the the solution on a diagram, and it was asking you the number of nails that you needed to put on a shear wall to, and they give you the different sizes of the shear wall, and you needed to put the the number of yeah fasteners, I'll say nails. Did you have a lot of alternative item type questions like that? No, it just, that that was the uh, the one I had in the afternoon only. Perfect. In the morning, no, nah, the rest of it was, uh, yeah, the rest of it was multiple choice. I didn't have uh, anything else that was okay. different. Well, Esteban, this has been super insightful for people that are considering taking the civil PE exam coming from mechanical. It's fun for people that are taking the structural depth exam to hear your experience. Um, I'm curious if someone was on the fence about joining Civil Engineering Academy's course, what would you tell them? I will say that don't think twice. I would recommend it 100%. And especially the support, like we mentioned earlier, the support, the Facebook group. I, I'm still in the Facebook group, and I'm still checking who has who asks questions, who needs some type of help. I'm very grateful with it. And also the material and now the simulator, I think is very accurate how it is that's awesome Esteban thank you for joining me today thanks for sharing your wisdom we appreciate you doing this um, we're excited for your future and your career where that's headed and hopefully this will be the springboard for you to you know rising to different uh, fields or, or different areas that you can grow in so thank you for yeah thanks thank you Isaac for the opportunity and obviously to the whole civil engineering academy instructors for all the help and support I appreciate that. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.